Hey everybody, it's your friend James Shaw. Trust you're doing okay. Thanks for joining us. As we like to do, we like to talk to elite people doing elite things so that you can implement those things in your business and have great success. And that's what we're going to do today. And I'm excited that Jill's with us. Hi, Jill. How are you? Hi, I'm good, James. How are you? I'm awesome. Thanks so much for taking time out to, to join us today. Will you introduce yourself to everybody? Tell us who you are and where you're from and a little bit about your business. Yeah, I am. Uh, I'm physically located in Hudson, Wisconsin, Wisconsin, which is right on the border of Minnesota and Wisconsin. So I'm dual licensed agent. I've been in real estate 16 years. And uh, last September, I took over as the OP here in my market center. So I'm kind of doing two roles right now. Uh, but I still sell, I still run a small family team here in our market center. And um, yeah, it's really good. You've got a great business and congratulations on the OP Thanks. opportunity. It's pretty cool. Thank you. Uh, one thing you figured out that we talk about a lot with people is that, look, as real estate agents, we are connectors of our community. That's our job. Our job is to pour into the community, to love on the community. You have your database that you love on and yet give back to your community. We talk about events all the time. We talk about ways to support the community through various giving opportunities. And you've taken that and put it into one. And that's what I want to talk about is how you can have an amazing event that supports your community, that's, that also gets your database excited and yet gives back to your community at the same time. Sure. Will you tell us a little bit about, just give us the overview of your big event that you do, and then we're going to break it down for everybody so that they could maybe do the same thing in their area. Sure. Yeah. Well, we actually like to do um, a few events throughout the year, but the one that's my favorite and um, it's, I'm kind of known in the community for empowering women. And um, I started this, this event 10 years ago called Bubbles and Bobbles. It's a jewelry swap event. And um, all of our events, we try to put in a component of giving back to the community or we pick a charity. Um, Bubbles and Bobbles was really designed as a way to connect with my people. It was, it was created for my past clients and now it's kind of evolved over 10 years. And we, we typically get like half past clients and then half, uh, you know, just referral partners that I know, other women business owners. And it's just, it was kind of just a big excuse to have a party. And it just has evolved over 10 years. And uh, so now I get sponsors to pay for most of the event. And it's just like a red carpet fun night for my, uh, my, my people. All right. So you're going to have to break this down for me. I have no idea what a jewelry swap <laughs> means. So <laughs> okay. probably many people are like, seriously, James, how do you not know this? But can you, for those of us who are like me and have no clue what you mean by a jewelry swap, would you explain this to me? Yeah. So what it is, is like us women, we like to wear jewelry and it's not for swapping, obviously expensive, you know, stuff. It's more like costume jewelry, but they get to bring up to five pieces with them to swap. And then it's like, they come and we set up a store, like a separate room, a separate area of the event where they get to go into the store and pick out five pieces of someone else's jewelry to take home with them. So it's, it's a swap. Like you bring five pieces, you get to take five different pieces home because, you know, one person's trash is another person's treasure. So, yeah. um, yeah. And, and while they're waiting to go swap their jewelry, you know, I give them wine, I give them food. They all have swag bags that are full of, you know, cool, fun things and they network and it's just a big party. It seems like it would be a lot of fun. I'm thinking my wife would love something like this. So this yes. sounds great. Okay. So, so then you also though tie it into a charity. So how do we take an event like this and then tie it in some way to raise money for an organization? Well, we sell t-shirts at the event that are branded and they're different every year um, in the hopes that people will just keep buying them. Um, and then the t-shirt money goes to the charity. So we give them that money. Um, I did start charging for the event. It used to be a free event. And what I found with doing it free is it sells out right away or all the tickets get scooped up right away. So when it was free, people would reserve like 10 tickets and then only six people would show up. So I started charging money for it 
and the money that I raise for the tickets goes to the charity. But this particular charity that we work with, Dress for Success, helps um, women who are getting back into the workforce and need help buying clothing. And so they, we donate, I encourage them to bring clothing to the event. And then I deliver the clothing to the um, charity because they need clothing for these women to, to wear when they're getting back on their feet. Dress for Success is great. We partnered with mm -hmm. them when I was team leader in North Carolina. We actually were the drop-off spot and people would, for no reason, like they didn't have a real estate appointment. They just wanted to drop off you know, business attire and various yeah. things for these ladies. It was, it's a great organization. So there's multiple ways someone can give back. And I think people love to give back. This is something that's important to them. I think so. So, so first they can come to the event and swap out jewelry themselves, which is a ton of fun. Yeah. But then they can clean out the closet and bring stuff by to help support these ladies that are out looking to get back on their feet and get a job and, and we need the proper attire to go on the interview and stuff like that. So they yes. can support that. And then you can look, I think charging, for this is a genius idea. And I think what you're gonna charge, you know, 25 bucks or whatever is totally great. You get a, a hundred, 150 people to come. That's a sizable donation that yep. you can share as well. And people like to do that sort of thing. So mm -hmm. I think it's great. I'm curious though, if you're you're renting a venue, you are, um, you know, getting food, you said they're gonna get some, uh, some snacks and some wine and stuff like that. There's some expense to you as well because the ticket cost you're passing through to the, to the, yes. to the, to the charity so you've got some expense on this, but yeah, I imagine it's worth it because your database is coming. Can you give us an idea of what an event like this might cost? Well, um, my estimate, I haven't gotten my final bill yet. It should be coming here any day. Um, the, the estimate was $3,100 for the venue. And that included the, the, the space, you know, they don't charge a lot to use the space because they know we're going to be um, eating and drinking. Um, so total, it was like $3,150, $3,150. Um, and I raised $3,600 in sponsorships. So I've overpaid, but then, you know, obviously there's printing costs. I do these um, branded, each person that comes gets a branded wine glass. Uh, the swag bag is a really nice canvas bag that costs me like $7.40 each. So there are other, even though I've overpaid, you know, I've collected enough money and sponsorships to pay for the event venue. I still have other costs involved that I'll use that extra, those extra funds to help cover. So I would say all in it's maybe $5,000. And, you know, if I can get $3,600 in sponsorships, a really awesome event is costing me $1,400. $1,400 bucks to connect with your top people, give back to the community. And you've done this for 10 years. People yes. love it and people show up every year. Yep. So let's talk about then your, your process to get sponsorships. $3,600 in sponsorships to help offset the cost of this event and then tie some of your vendor partners into it as well is really smart. Tell us a little bit about that process and what it looks like and how you get sponsors involved. Yeah, well, it's a lot different now than it used to be 10 years ago. Um, 10 years ago, you know, I'd be happy to get like $500 in sponsorships. But now that uh, the event, you know, people know what it is, and they want to be a part of it. So now I, I, I just literally send out an email. Uh, um, I send out a smart plan. So they get like three emails. And I, this year I didn't have to do a lot of calling, but in the previous years, when I first started out um, with sponsor, trying to get sponsors, I would call people, you know, I would first send an email, then I would call people. I make sure that my video from the previous year is getting out on social media in case somebody doesn't really know, like, what is this event? And just over years, as you do it more and more, people are going to just want to be a part of it. And that's sort of what has happened um, to me. But it, what I would say is if anyone is just going to be starting and wanting to do this, like for the swag, for the swag bag, I started asking people in June and I just had my event last Thursday. So I started like three months in advance asking for swag because people need to think about what, what do they want their item to be? You know, what do they want to put in the bag? And they need to budget for it too, because when you're asking for 125 swag items, if the item you're putting in the bag is $2, like 
some business owners might only have a budget for a couple hundred dollars, you know, but then we get other things like this was one of the items in the swag bag was um, a branded, somebody branded a cute little hat. So like, it's not a bag full of garbage. It's yeah. fun stuff that people will actually use. Well, and if you live on the border of Wisconsin and Minnesota, you're going to need that uh, hat. Yes. Keep your ears warm. Uh, I don't need it down here, but you definitely yeah. do. Okay, so so you reach out to local businesses. Hey, do you want to participate as a sponsor? I imagine if they participate as a sponsor, you also say you can throw something in the swag bag if you want. Yeah. You have a, so you have. I, I'm looking at this. I'm going. You have a ton of lead gen opportunities. Oh my gosh! This. Because this, you can you can talk to your database. You can talk to local business owners. Yes. There's a ton of opportunity for you to connect with people and drum up some business too. Yep. Well, the other thing that I love is I have a group called St. Croix Valley Girls that I started 16 years ago when I got into business. It's a women's networking group kind of like a BNI, but for, for, um, you know, I don't limit the, the number of, you know, realtors or insurance people or whatever in my group. What's really nice about having that group. I really lean heavily on that group to get my sponsors and my swag from. It's really smart. It seems like you would need to already be engaged in what's going on in your community to have success with this. Like, yes. like if you're not someone that you're giving back to the community a lot, you're supporting the community, you're very visible to the business owners. If you're not that, maybe launching this would be a little bit harder. Right. So, so sure. let's go to the person that's listening to this and going, Jill, I love this idea, but you know what? I haven't been engaged in my community at the same level you have. So yeah. what, what would you tell them to start just to get engaged with their community? Well, I mean, there's tons of ways to get involved in your community for free without costing anything. Um, Chamber of Commerce, if you can't afford to join, just go to, if they're having an art fair in the park, ask to volunteer or just go down there and start talking to some of the vendors. Um, attend networking groups like the one that I have um, at for a very low cost you can start plugging in and getting to know the other business owners in the community. So I would just say, go to anything free that you can in your community, maybe sign up to be an ambassador with your chamber of commerce. Um, there's so many opportunities to be out there in the community. And honestly, starting a networking group like St. Croix Valley Girls, when I started this 16 years ago, I created this little postcard and I walked around town with it. And it cost me nothing. And I, I was just saying to people, hey, I have this amazing women's group that meets once a month. We get together. We all have lunch together. Um, I bring in a speaker, an educational speaker, so we can all learn from them. You know, what do you say? Come and check it out. And I built my database one person, one by one by one. And I was out there selling something that I didn't actually have yet. So when you, when you give the, when you give the energy, like, Hey, I have this really cool thing. You need to be a part of it. It's sort of, I was manifesting it before I actually had it. If yeah. that makes sense. It makes total sense. And I also would imagine uh, that you were giving referrals before you were getting referrals. Yes. Like you, oh, you, you, you definitely seem like a connector. So you yes. are going to meet somebody that owns a business in town. And then you run into somebody a week later, who's talking about such and such. And you're, you're like, Oh my goodness, I know this person that you need to go see. I'm sure that yes. you were giving, giving, giving before you were getting. Yes. Yes. Uh huh. And is I that still, an important piece? Yes. That's a, that is, um, that is number one. Like that is one of the things I love that we hear all the time at KW is, you have to give value before you can expect, like you have to give before you get. And if I just like keep that in my brain, like constantly like, okay, how can I give value? How can I help this person? Um, I feel like I'm naturally going to get what I need in the end. So. It's good. It's really good. All right. As we wrap up, if somebody wants to pull off an event similar to yours, what advice would you give them? And and we have a playbook. Our Inspire members are all going to get a playbook of step by step what to do. Yes. If you're not an Inspire member, just listen to what Jill's about to tell you and go do it. But the Inspire yeah. members, we've documented the system so you all have access to it. But Jill, what would your advice be to someone who'd want to do an event like this? Um, well, I would say first, again, have the mindset that you already have something really cool. 
I would do up a flyer or an invitation or something, or maybe just your sponsor form. And then I would start walking around town, talking to anyone who you think might be interested in partnering because the other thing you could do, you know, I, when I started this 10 years ago, I had a team around, you know, I, I have a team. If you don't have a team, go partner with someone in the community who might be interested in, in like co-branding this event with you. So I would say, just make sure that you, um, you know, you pick your venue, make sure your venue is a private venue. You don't want other random people coming into your event. Um, Create your, your collateral materials, all your printed stuff. Walk around town talking to people about it. Go to networking groups and say, hey, I have an amazing opportunity to sponsor this great event. And um, if it's your first year, plan it a year out because you're going to need time to, to get all that. Good advice. Out. Jill, thank you so much for taking yeah. time out. Congratulations on a great event. And thank thanks you. for giving back to your community. I think this is, you figured it out. And this is part that I think some agents struggle with. When you go all in on your community, you can succeed in your business at a high level. So go yeah. pour into them, go help them, and you'll win. Jill, thank you so much. Appreciate you. Awesome. Thanks, Jim, James.